Piss off. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I told you my name, so bollocks. <laughs> I come from a, a, show, a small village called Longridge. Yeah. Also known as the pimple on the ring piece of the northwest. <laughs> it's been twinned with a disused toilet block on the front at Skegness. <laughs> I have to be home by midnight, because it gets locked up. There's a neon sign on the way out that says, last one back, turn the lights off and lock it. <laughs> they used to have traffic lights there, but they've taken them down now because, well, the people used to come out and watch them change. <laughs> created havoc with, with road traffic. <laughs> Uh, they used to prop the dead up in bus shelters on a Saturday night to make it look busy. <laughs> it's quite a close knit community as well. It's that close, most of them have the same eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> They're also the man the mother was. <laughs> I'm not saying it's rough, but the dogs were around in twos. And it's the only place I know where you can buy a 12-fingered pair of gloves off the peg. <laughs> but, it's played a major part in history. You're going to get a history now lesson, ladies and gentlemen. A bit shaky, but you're going to get a history lesson. 17th century. None other than Oliver Cromwell passed through Longridge on his way down from Skipton to Preston for the famous Battle of Preston. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> oh, it's it is. I saw it. <laughs> so on the 17th of August, 1648, <laughs> he was with him. <laughs> Oliver Cromwell, or Oak Knoll, <laughs> as his mates call him. He's not got many mates. Oak Cromwell, or Oak Knoll, had been peregrinating. <laughs> that alphabet soup were good. He'd been peregrinating over hill and vale and come across a large valley. And he looked to the valley and said, Bloody hell, that ridge is a long one. <laughs> so he sat down for his afternoon snack, took a bite out of a cheese onion baguette, had a quick slurp of his goat's milk, stood up, brushed the crumbs off and said, bugger me, I'm going to call it Longeridge. <laughs> he were a clever mum, you know, he were a clever mum, he were a clever mum. He looked a bit like Mr Potato Head with a sharp nose and a bad hairdo, but he was a farmer. It was a parliamentarian. I can see you all gathered here now. You're in. It was also an army commander of the New Model Army. Does everybody know what the New Model Army is? No. The round heads. But I've got all the New Model Army records, and uh, his name's not in them credits anywhere. But I believe it to be true. But, I can't find it here. but anyway, 17th of August, 1648, three hours after his lunch at 1348, <laughs> he had a bit of a set to with a gentleman called the Duke of Hamilton. <coughs> he was leader of Cavaliers. In fact, he looked a bit like Brian May on Brian, <laughs> Brian May on a Shetland pony. <laughs> <laughs> They were about five-ish, but they had a bit of a coming together. And for four hours, they duked it out. In fact, they, they knocked seven bells of shite out of each other, to be quite honest. Till around about nine-ish, due to bad light and a bit of fatigue, <laughs> both sides withdrew for meat. <laughs> Next morning, 10.30 a.m., after I was warm up, <laughs> Oliver Cromwell sent his, his ground men on foot, sent them in. They went in, windmilling in, 
With bags of goat droppings with stones in. <laughs> ooh, hey, ooh. Shit's lying everywhere. <laughs> well, this, this got better at Cavaliers. They were a bit upset because he just had their tunics just dry cleaned and had a the scotch. Still, they tried to have a go back, but Cromwell's men were too quick. They got him in a full pincer movement, almost had him completely surrounded. When from back of yonder battlefield, the Duke has been watching this off his pony. <laughs> shouts, Ref! Referee! Offside! Come on, Ref! <laughs> well, that brought proceedings to a stop. The stewards had to have a bit of an inquiry. You see, there were no VAR then. <laughs> So, after considerable talks, they brought for dinner at 1.30. <laughs> well, they still hadn't solved the matter. So, fighting was obeyed until about 7pm, when both leaders were summoned to the ref's tent. So, in they went. There was a great deal of remonstration, finger-pointing, foot-stamping and some drawings being drawn. Well, it was found to be in Duke's favour. So then it ended up, the Duke came out the door, smiling with a skip in his step, off back to his camp, followed by Oliver Cromwell with his head down, drawings under his arm, stamping his feet in the face like a bulldog making piss off a thistle. <laughs> <laughs> the fighting was postponed till the next day on the premise that Oliver Cromwell would understand the offside rule. <laughs> so the next day, the final day of the battle, 19th of August, 1648, at 9 30 in the morning this time, Oliver Cromwell does the same thing again, sends his men in, windmilling in with his little bag of goat droppings. This caught him off guard completely. They're having their hair washed and their nails done. <laughs> and someone shouts out, hey, young buggers, come early. Still, they dug in, they pulled up a good fight. And at 1.30, lunch was called, as usual. So they sat back and had a rest. Well, during, during dinner hour, Cromwell had heard as the Duke and his men had had fish and chips. Well, anybody that works and eats fish and chips, you know what it does to you. God, it makes you slow and sluggish. It's all them carbs. Cromwell knew this, so he'd been on dandelion leaves. Oh, him and his men, they'd been on their runs, but they have the wrong dandelion leaves. <laughs> you could smell them from Birmingham. <laughs> he knew what had happened, so they set to at 2.30. Sure enough, the Duke's men, they were burping and farting and, and couldn't stand up crap, they couldn't hold their swords. So in went Cromwell's men, this time halfway in a pincer movement. The Duke's watching from his pony, he looks at the ref, looks at the linesman. The flag stayed down and the ref shouted play on. So they stormed in, they surrounded the Cavaliers and ended it. That were it. The round heads won. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> But the spoils of war were short for Cromwell, as was his time. And what he had to do, really, was carry on to London, because he needed a, a word with King Charles I. Plus that, and there were some revolting rebels and peasants, and some que uh, uprisings that needed quelling. But when he actually got to London, and he met King Charles I, he gave him such a bollocking. He told him to pull his finger out, get sorted out, and let's have a parliament that works in favour of the people, not just for him. So what did he do? We got the vote. We got to vote for what we want, when we want, and how we want. And we've ended up with Jeremy Corburn. <laughs> And that other belong from. <laughs> All I can say is, thanks a lot, Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> yeah, fucking not bad. <laughs>